As Young Thug once said, I'm a stoner, I'm a stoner, I'm a stoner. Free Thugga. Weed and muscle growth. What does the science say, AKA the stoner's go-to guide for lifting and smoking the devil's lettuce? First, let's break down what we're actually talking about when we say smoking weed or marijuana. Weed contains more than a hundred different cannabinoids, but the two most important ones for this video are THC and CBD. THC or tetrahydrocannabinol is the psychoactive component that gives you that high feeling. It interacts with the endocannabinoid system in our body, particularly the CB1 and CB2 receptors, which are found in the brain and throughout the body. Now, this interaction can influence anything from mood to pain perception to appetite and even how our body uses energy. CBD, on the other hand, doesn't have psychoactive effects, and that's why you see so many CBD products, but has been shown to have some potential anti-inflammatory and just in general calming effects on the body, which is why you see so many muscle recovery, pain management, sleep quality, and in general products that are branded this way with CBD as their main compound. Although when we intuitively think of rassing the tank, AKA smoking, AKA getting high, we think of good mood, we think of improved sleep, higher appetite, less stress. But when we look behind the curtain and we specifically look at the scientific literature, as much as I don't want it to be true, there are many terms and conditions and potential adverse health effects that we need to consider and can potentially play a role in muscle growth specifically. But let's get into it. There are a few key areas to consider when it comes to weed and muscle growth. Hormones, performance, recovery, and lifestyle are some of those that we're gonna to touch on. There are studies when we look at hormones that suggest that THC, the psychoactive component of weed, can lower testosterone levels, at least temporarily. Now, testosterone is one of those hormones that is almost synonymous with muscle growth for some people. And if in theory it reduces testosterone, it could potentially impair gains. However, the current literature is mixed. The reduction in testosterone levels from marijuana use appears to be relatively mild and transient in most cases, returning to baseline after a few hours. So while it might not be a major concern for occasional users, chronic heavy use could potentially have a significant impact. As it stands, data is pointing to a soft eh, when it comes to testosterone and marijuana, which is something that we need to take in consideration. It may not be anything extreme to worry about, and it is likely nothing you should be worried about if you occasionally engage in absolutely rassing the thing. But if you're a stoner, an appropriate stoner, and you are waking and baking and then blazing throughout the day and also lifting while high, you may be creating a suboptimal environment. Now let's talk about performance and those of you out there who decide to smoke before training. I am not a big fan of smoking before training. And if I was to hypothetically smoke or have hypothetically smoked ever in my life, I hypothetically had a hypothetical rule that said we never smoke before training. We treat training with the respect it deserves. And if we want to get high, we get high afterwards. I've seen people that swear by lifting while high and that it allows them to focus. And that may be the case. Uh, at the end of the day, weed is also used. Medicinal cannabis is used for ADHD treatment in some cases, even and even in the UK. But if you're lifting weights or doing high intensity training, getting absolutely blitzed pre-workout is likely not the best idea for your gains. Being high could reduce your performance, making it harder for you to push yourself very close to failure, which is important for muscle growth. And additionally, cannabis can affect cardiovascular function. Some studies have shown that THC can cause an increase in heart rate and a decrease in exercise tolerance, which can be problematic for a lot of you out there, especially if you have like a high rep leg workout in front of you and you have to really push yourself to failure or very close to failure and be out of breath. It is not ideal. Personally, I recommend that if you're going to get high, do so after your workout. You do not, the same way you wouldn't have caffeine 
before going to bed or you wouldn't have a stimulant before wanting to relax. There's no reason to consume something that will relax you before going and lifting. Okay, fair enough. I see you commenting. It helps me. If it helps you, do whatever. Eat literal shit if that gets you to feel better and do a workout. But as a rule of thumb, if you're going to do it, rather do it after your workout than before. And I'm relatively strict about having that rule, especially if you regard yourself as a serious lifter. On the flip side, some people may argue that consuming cannabis can help with muscle recovery and sleep, which is why we've heard so much about CBD and its pain relieving properties and its body relaxation properties. In theory, these effects could help with muscle recovery, especially after intense training sessions allowing you to relax more, laugh more, eat more, and just in general, recover better. And sleep is another area where cannabis, especially strains high in CBD, might offer some advantages and quality of sleep is obviously important for muscle growth and recovery. So that's an area where cannabis consumption can help by reducing anxiety, pr promoting relaxation, and allow you to sleep better. However, there's a downside too. While Cannabis may help some people fall asleep faster. It can also disrupt the REM sleep cycle, which is the deep sleep stage that is particularly important for cognitive function, memory, and muscle recovery. Regular cannabis use has been linked to decreased REM sleep, which could ultimately impair recovery and performance over time. So while there are some potential benefits, there's also negatives that you need to consider. And the effects may vary from person to person, depending on the dosage, the strain, whether what you're consuming is regulated and you know what you're consuming, and overall how you consume cannabis. More specifically, although cannabis can help some people relax, you all, especially those of you that have smoked before, have your fair share of horror stories with anxiety, panic attacks, or just an increased alertness and feeling of paranoia whenever getting high. This is particularly true when you are not really aware of what you're smoking in countries where weed is not regulated and not legal, where you may just end up smoking more than you wanted. You may end up getting a much higher dose than you wanted. And overall, it is not 100% guaranteed that you will be super chill and actually just floating around while being high. For some people, smoking or just consuming THC can boop, backfire real quick and actually lead to them being more stressed than relaxed. So that's also something important to take in consideration. But aside from what I just mentioned, let's also consider lifestyle factors. One of the most significant concerns with cannabis use is its potential to impact your overall lifestyle choices. For example, THC is known to increase appetite, which leads to what many of you know as the munchies. While this might sound great for some people that are trying to bulk, the reality is that it can often lead to consuming unhealthy, high calorie foods that yes, in theory support muscle growth, but at the same time, poor nutrition choices, either that being you overeating or consuming less protein because you stopped yourself with a bunch of cookies or whatever other high palatable food can make muscle growth less. Additionally, consuming cannabis can affect your consistency, motivation, and overall, the feeling of wanting to go get after it, either that being your goals in the gym or outside the gym, but for the gym specifically, if smoking becomes a habit that interferes with your training consistently, it can certainly have a negative effect on muscle growth over time. Consuming cannabis is and can be, or I'm not sure how to phrase it because I don't want people to start crying, but it can be addictive. If you're into this endless cycle of smoking and looking forward to the next time you consume cannabis, especially if you have a circle that sort of encourages that behavior, you may find yourself hitting the gym less than if you were to put yourself either out of that circle or out of that habit. Again, this may be my personal bias and the things I have experienced firsthand with friends and people that I knew, but weed and consistency are not the best and it requires a great level of discipline and planning around your consumption of cannabis in order to actually make it work with a training routine that has you in the gym multiple times per week training pretty hard. Another point to consider is the method of consumption, and this is huge. Smoking, whether it's with tobacco or just cannabis by itself, can have harmful effects on lung function and cardiovascular health. If 
you actually look at the data on weed consumption and specifically recent data that came out and you look at like number of joints per day and if you look at people that smoke at least a joint per day we see an increase in stroke and cardiovascular disease up to i think 40 percent smoking even though people will tell you i don't know how, what the thinking is that it's not as harmful as smoking cigarettes in many countries first of all people smoke cannabis with tobacco smoke as they do in europe and in the balkans specifically where i originate from but even if you're smoking just the plant itself, as hypothetically some people in this room may have been an advocate for, for the, the majority of their lives, even just doing that is harmful for your lungs and cardiovascular health. You're still smoking and you are smoking heavy smoke. It is by no means healthy and it is definitely a net negative to your overall health to be smoking cannabis, whether you smoke with tobacco or not. So if you're going to do it, a potentially better alternative is vaping. Vaping reduces the exposure to harmful combustion products like tar and carcinogens, which are present in smoke, and you still get THC and CBD in a way that is less irritating to your lungs, allowing for a more efficient absorption of these cannabinoids without the, some of the harmful side effects associated with smoking. However, and this goes for all the people that may be watching this that are not in countries where cannabis is, legal and regulated. Be very careful with the vapes that you may be able to source from the black market. There's been many instances in the news and in the forums and in whatever of counterfeit, product, counterfeit products that are not really cannabis and may include other substances that can be extremely harmful both for your brain and cardiovascular health. Be extremely mindful of that because keep in mind, your dealer or whoever you know does not have your best interest in mind. People are out there to make money. I know it's a bit of a pedantic point and we're somewhat off track, but I need to throw this disclaimer out there. Just because you thought you found the actual legit vape, be careful with what you're smoking. However, if you live in a country where cannabis is legal for consumption, and especially for recreational use, vapes are a great alternative. Plenty of brands out there, plenty of different strains, flavors, and in general, you can still gauge how much you're smoking because you know the doses of THC and CBD in each vape, and they make for a much better alternative to smoking. Edibles are another great option uh, for you to consume THC in a way that doesn't damage your lungs entirely. However, edibles also offer a more sustained release of cannabinoids in the bloodstream, which might help with pain relief, relaxation, and sleep. But because edibles take longer to kick in and their effects can be much stronger and longer lasting than smoking or vaping, which will have THC in your blood much quicker, it's easy to consume too much or think, ah, eh, I'm just gonna have X amount of milligrams, what's the worst that can happen, and find yourself in a bit of a pickle. Keep in mind, if you've ever consumed edibles or have friends who have consumed edibles, you've heard or actually lived those stories. Random story that popped in my head with certain individuals, 150 milligrams of THC in JFK in New York, shout out the people that know. Edibles are nothing to fuck with and you'd rather start on a very low dose, assess tolerance and take it from there. Edibles can be great because you're not smoking whatsoever, there's nothing going in your lungs and you can choose exactly how much THC and CBD you're consuming without really thinking about it or having to do any calculations. But you know what's better than edibles? Amyodap.com with the special wheat smoker programming mode that is totally there and not a lie I made up for me to plug my up again. Yes, the most versatile training app, even for you stoners. Are you a stoner and you just wanna train two times per week? You can't be asked to even download the Excel spreadsheet and you just wanna click three buttons and have an app coach you? No problem, my Adapt has you covered. You can even click express mode at the beginning, skip the long setup, the app will do the rest for you. Want to not think about your split and what exercises to do next, want the best exercises prioritized for you, rep ranges, weight to use, how many reps to do per set, you want all that sorted and taken care of, MyoDot has you. Roll up your next blood clot zoot, spark that thing, 
click sign up, sign up with five different accounts because you forgot you signed up, give us more money, that's your fault for smoking too much, and let MyAdapt do the rest. So, what's the final verdict? Can you consume cannabis and still gain muscle? The answer is yes, but it somewhat depends as well. Occasional use is totally fine, especially for those that occasional means, you know, every blue moon I'll have an edible or I'll visit my one friend who smokes and I'll have a couple of tokes and get a bit high. However, if you're smoking daily or multiple times per week, especially with tobacco or smoking by rolling joints or blunts, unfortunately, you are doing more damage than good for both your health and muscle group. And that's an unfortunate reality of the devil's lettuce. I wish it was different, but if you're gonna use cannabis, use it strategically to enhance your recovery, enhance your relaxation, and ideally do not use it often. That said, lift, laugh, die, and spark a joint in my name, Sears Pack, when you spark it, rascalapparel.com doctor pack for 10% off an emotional episode for all my stoners out there there's hope just don't overdo it I know it's hard I know you love it but muscle growth above everything baby those guns don't care about your smoking habit and they want growth to be maximized and you'd rather be alive in a few years Peace. <laughs>